We're off to Ure, Colorado, and this whole trip got started. Warren Industries gave us a call and said, hey, how'd you like to go to a Jeep Jamboree? And I thought, well, we're always doing ATVs and side-by-sides, but off-roading is off-roading, and that's kind of how I got my start, Jeeping. So I thought we'd go out there and check it out, see what the Jeepers do, and also do some homework for an ATV or a side-by-side -side trip. And I'm glad we did because it was an amazing trip. I'm Brian Fisher. Growing up, I always had a love for the outdoors and riding ATVs and side-by-sides. So I found a way to turn my passion into a lifestyle. I travel the world to explore the most scenic trails, take on some of the toughest terrain, and challenge myself to some of the deepest mud holes. The best part, my wife Melissa, my daughter Brianna, my son Brady, and even our dog Max gets to come along for the ride too. You never know where the trail might take us, but you can always count on it being a cool adventure. Join us as we keep it real and hit the trails on Fisher's ATV World. We just flew into Grand Junction, Colorado, and we are off to Ure, Colorado. And the reason we're here is for a Jeep Jamboree. Now, I've never been to a Jeep Jamboree before. Not sure what to expect, but we're gonna be taking four-wheeling to a whole new level because we're hanging out with the Warren guys this week. It's gonna be a great time right now. It is a beautiful day here in Colorado, 78 degrees. We got a two-hour drive. Let's get our bags loaded up and roll. Gotta get all my bags in this little car. Jeep Jamboree is basically an organization that allows people to come across country into areas that they don't know and are not familiar with and are new to jeeping and get with like-minded individuals to ensure their safety so that they can go through trails, in this case through our lovely mountains, and ensure that they get through it safe, sound, and have a great time and know that they get back. Basically create a new family or friendship with people that are of like-minded interests. So if they ever decide to come back again, they know who they can reach out to. 130 Jeeps are going to be on the trails today. Places are going to be tight, but it's going to be fun. Ure, Colorado is this quaint little town sitting in the middle of the San Juan Mountains. I had been to Colorado before, but I had forgotten how beautiful it was. And once we got out on the trail and we started doing some jeeping, it was like every corner we went around, it was like we were in a postcard. It's important for us to be here so the consumers know that we're also Jeep guys. We're out here, we're supporting them, we're making a presence. We brought our Brute and brought one of our other Jeeps out, a four-door JK. We've gotten so many people come up to us like, it's so cool that you guys are out here. And that's just a really, really great feeling, really good for business. Let a little bit of air out, make a little softer ride, a little more grip. I believe we have 35 right at the moment and we're gonna go down to 20. You get a little, the tires right now when they're aired up, you have a, kind of makes it kind of squared off. There's only this much contact basically hitting the train that you're on. When you air it down, it makes it more flat. Gives a little softer ride as well. We're hitting the Poughkeepsie Trail. Got my Garmin GPS all set up just in case we get lost. Right now we're at 7,900 feet. And I'd imagine we're probably going to be getting in about maybe 10,000 feet. I'm not real sure, but I know I've been to areas like this before, and you can go from 7,000, 8,000 to 10,000 feet, you know, pretty quick. So we got to drink lots of water, don't want to get a headache. It's totally different when you're at 10,000 feet elevation compared to sea level where, you know, a lot of us live. The Poughkeepsie Trail is one of our hardest out here and it's actually the most beautiful and scenic out here. It'll test everybody from just taking a nice easy road to rocky road to shelf roads with a thousand foot drops on the side to mountain vista views and then it'll take you up to our most famous obstacle out here called the wall. One of the coolest things about Warren as a company is you'll see them at a lot of off-road events, helping their customers, teaching them, educating. And even when we were out on the trail at the Jeep Jamboree, Scott was doing a little winching demo to help people understand how to use their winch properly.
That's the idea of Jeep Jamboree USA, is for the guy that has the daily driver, that drives home, drives to work, drives goes four-wheeling, and then they want to drive back home. They can bring the same Jeep out here uh, to go four-wheeling, they can go grocery shopping, they can go to the movies, and they can even go on scenic tours in the high mountain roads. One thing's for sure, there's a lot of history in the San Juan Mountains. There's a lot of just little old mining towns that just out in the middle of nowhere. And we had a chance to stop by one on our way up to California Pass, and we had our lunch there and gave us an opportunity to walk around the town and check it out. Fisher's ATV World is brought to you by Can-Am, ITP Tires and Wheels, Suzuki, Keystone Raptor Toy Haulers, and b and Trailer Hitches. We couldn't have picked a better time of the year to go to Ure, Colorado because the leaves were just starting to change and we were out in the trails in the middle of nowhere and you'd come around a corner and see this beautiful lake and it just gave us a great opportunity to stop and appreciate the great outdoors and what we have. These roads out here that we have, they are open to everyone and they are county roads, but uh, they're not county roads by many other state standards because they are, with some with the uh, 8, 12, 20% grade increases, there are rocks in the road that's going to hit a standard car on the bottom and you're going to get stuck. And a lot of the ATVs, motorcycles, even bicyclists and motorcycles love to come out here and take these roads out here and they go clear across the country. So it's an environment for everybody out here. 12,960 feet here at California Pass. That's a long way up, especially if you're looking out over the edge. That's a long way down. It's been a good trail ride today. It's been a really nice day, a little windy, but at 12,000 feet, you're gonna have some wind. We were at the top of California Pass. It's almost 13,000 feet, and we're trying to get all these Jeeps on this little bit of real estate at the top of the mountain. And our spotter kept telling Scott, you know, come ahead, come ahead, you got it. And Scott about had to come apart because he thought we were going down over the edge. Trust the spotter. He wasn't going to put me in any harm. Just turned the mirrors off. I didn't have to look in them and just listen to him, and we were all good. He was not trusting the spotter. That was not happening. He's like, no, no. Only one time. He it, was like, oh, I'm looking, look, I'm too close. Yeah, it, it took a minute to get to trust the spotter, but. He goes, trust my spotter, trust my spotter. <laughs> When you're out wheeling, you're going to find that a lot of the times you'll use the winch for yourself, but a lot of times, more than likely, it's going to be in another application where you're using it for somebody else, to assist somebody else. If you guys get up on this trail, you guys get crossed up for whatever reason, you can use a snatch block to pull the back end of the vehicle around. You want to be so careful when you're like that. There's a general rule of thumb, it's usually one and a half times growth vehicle weight. That's really the rule for the Jeep, truck, SUV guys. You look at your door, see what your gross vehicle weight is. That's where it's basically loaded with fuel. But like if you're gonna be going out doing camping all the time, you gotta add all that stuff in and then factor that in as well. Do one and a half times, and then that's gonna be a good safety factor for you. For Jeeps in general, I like nine, 9,500. I believe that's fine. If you've got a big Jeep that's really capable and lifted with, let's say, 38s, 40s, somewhere pretty high up like that, then a Xeon 10 would be a good source. If you're going out off-roading and you're equipping your vehicle to be off-road, some of the best things you can have is like a worn winch. I recommend synthetic cable. Definitely bring tree straps and bring like a 20-foot strap. Use D-rings so that you can lock them in. And then the other thing is basic sets of tools. Hammers are always good to bring, screwdrivers of each kind, basic wrenches, sockets and ratchets, stuff like that really help get you a long ways. Both the Warren Jeeps that we were in were set up with the Xeon Platinum winches. Now the Platinum winch is the top of the line winch for Warren and it comes with this really cool handheld wireless remote that you can control your winch from inside or outside of your vehicle. The handheld wireless remote allows you to engage and disengage your clutch, turn off and on your auxiliary lights. It also tells you the temperature of your winch to make sure you're not overheating it and the amp draw on your vehicle. So a handheld wireless remote like this is an extremely valuable tool to the serious off-roader. 
our winches are a premium brand of winch. We'll always work for you. I've had winches go a year without using it, and I know as soon as I plug in that remote, the winch is gonna work. Uh, we have amazing customer service, and we have a really great service department, so if you have a problem with your winch, we can take care of you at the plant, or we have a lot of uh, service centers around the country that we'll send you to as well. We're done, we conquered California Trail. Yeah, give me some. Mmm, yeah. Whether you're using a winch on your Jeep, truck, ATV, or side-by-side, -side, the techniques are all pretty much the same. But what I'm gonna do now is take a few minutes and give you some tips on how to get the most out of your winch. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when you get your brand new warm winch is read your instruction manual. I know this is difficult for us guys, but believe me, there's a lot of good information in there that's really beneficial when it comes to using your winch. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is stretch out your rope or your cable because when it comes from the factory, it's not stretched, and if you don't do this first, you could cause some serious damage to your cable. There's gonna be a lot of different scenarios where you use your winch. Of course, the one that we're all familiar with is using it in a big old mud hole. And then another thing you can do is if you're on a really steep uphill or downhill incline and you wanna use your winch line as a safety feature, one thing you don't wanna do though is use it as a toe strap because that creates a lot of shock on the internal parts of your winch and is also really hard on your drum and can cause damage. Something else I always carry out on the trail is a worn accessory kit. And this is sold separately from your winch, but the nice thing about the accessory kit is it comes with some tree trunk protectors, a shackle, a snatch block, and some heavy duty worn winching gloves. And something else I throw into my accessory kit, which is sold separately, is the worn 50 foot extension rope. Now this is nice because it always seems to me like the trees that I need to get to are just a little bit farther away, and this 50 foot will definitely help get you there. Before you really get into any winching situation, you want to assess everything and make sure that it's going to go down the way you plan for it to go down. You just don't want to wing it because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. First of all, we came up here to make sure it was a straight line pool. And another thing, we wanted to make sure it was a good, healthy, live tree because a lot of people have gotten hurt by pulling dead trees over on themselves. We only came about three quarters of the way with our cable on our side by side. So it's a good thing I have my synthetic extension rope along because we're gonna need it to get to that anchor tree. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna put our tree trunk protector on here and we wanna put it nice and low. You have your best foundation and base at the roots of the tree, not up high. And then we put our shackle on our tree trunk protector and then we put our synthetic rope extension through the shackle. And the nice thing about the worn extension rope is it has a metal ring around so you don't wear and tear the rope. This is there to reinforce the rope and give you more strength on your extension rope. Well, we have plenty of extension rope, so what we'll do is hook it up to our hook here and we'll go down and take up the slack with the winch on our side-by-side. -side. A typical side-by-side -side weighs around 1,600 pounds and this has a 4,500 pound winch on it. If you get really swamped in the mud, you're gonna need a 4,500 pound winch to get you out. It's not just a matter of pulling it up over a hill like this, but if you're sunk and you're down to the bottom of your machine and it is really hard to get out, you're gonna need 4,500 pounds to get you out. And if you don't have enough there, you may have to use your snatch block and use a double line pull and go back to the machine to double your power on your winch. That'll turn your 4,500 pound winch into a 9,000 pound winch by just doubling back to your machine. I put the worn accessory bag on here. This is just a safety precaution in case the cable should happen to break. And you could really use anything for this. You could use a coat or anything that has a little bit of weight to it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is start our side by side. You wanna make sure you have it started because it drains a lot of power from your battery. And the last thing you wanna do is get out of the situation you're in and then be stuck there anyhow because you got a dead battery. A good rule of thumb is to winch for about a minute, give it a break for a minute, winch for a minute, give it a break for a minute. And what that does is your winch draws a lot of heat as you're doing this, so it lets the heat dissipate and then it also helps to recharge your battery. Now that I showed you how to use the remote outside the side-by-side, -side, I'm gonna jump inside because there's a couple benefits. You can help steer the machine and give it a little bit of gas to get the job done. On a steep incline situation, if you just give your machine just a little bit of gas, not enough to go ahead of the winch, but just enough to assist it, that really helps in keeping your winch cool. Even though this tree is dead straight ahead of us, we still stacked a little bit to the right, and if you keep stacking like this, you're gonna damage your winch. 
Anytime you have your cable stack up to one side or the other like this after you're done winching, you're gonna have to free spool it all out and then rewind it and stack it all up nice and even so that way next time you go to use your winch, you'll be good to go. Not every winching situation is a straight line pool with a solid anchor point. That's why it's really important to know your winching guide inside and out so that way when you do come up against a situation like this, you'll be ready. Closed captioning provided by Rick's Motorsport Electrics. Fisher's ATV World has been brought to you by Western Power Sports and Fly Racing, Rush Off-Road Park, Can Cooker, Dirt Wheels Magazine, and ATV UTV Action Magazine. Just when you thought the side-by-side -side market couldn't get any bigger, well guess what? There's a new player to the game. Bad Boy Off-Road introduced their Stampede 900, and I gotta tell you, I think they're gonna be one fierce competitor in the side-by-side -side market. One of the first things a lot of guys like to talk about whenever it comes to a side-by-side -side is the power plant, and the Bad Boy Stampede 900 has an 80 horsepower engine in it with 59 foot-pounds of torque, and in my opinion, one of the coolest things they did was think outside the box and put a German engine in it. Something else Bad Boy Off-Road did to make sure that your German engine runs for many years to come is they put in a dry sump oil system. Now what does that mean? That means lower temperatures, less friction, longer oil life. If you should ever happen to swamp your machine, the water doesn't get into your oil. And when you're out on the trail and you're cornering hard or doing some steep hill climbs, your oil is going to stay where it needs to be. One of the first things I notice whenever I get behind the wheel of the Stampede is it rides really good. It has a dual A-arm suspension, front and rear. We've got nine and a half inches of suspension travel in the front. We've got 10 and a half inches in the rear. And we also have a front and rear sway bar. So that way, when you're really laying into it out on the trail, you don't have a lot of body roll. A couple other benefits that I see with the Stampede is one, you have 11 and a quarter inches of ground clearance, which means you have a nice tall stance, you don't bottom out as much. And another thing, the Stampede's only 58 inches wide, and nowadays it seems like the side-by-sides are getting wider and wider, but with the Stampede, it gives you the ability to get back into some more tight trail systems or even get back into that top secret hunting spot. One thing a lot of off-roaders can appreciate when they're looking to buy a side-by-side -side is a full door. And all the Stampedes come standard with an impact and corrosion resistant door. And the nice thing about these doors is they put the handles on the inside, then that way you don't have it on the outside in case you brush up against a tree or you're going through a lot of mud. Two days later, you can't open the door because your handle's jammed full of mud. So putting a handle on the inside was a really smart idea. And then once we get the door open, we'll see that we have 10 square feet of entrance and exit. So that way, no matter what your size or what time of the year it is, how many clothes you got on, that 10 foot makes it super easy to get in and out. And when we get into the cockpit here, you'll notice that it's set up a lot like your vehicle. It has tilt steering wheel for your convenience. And then over here, we have selectable drive options. You have a single rear wheel drive for like a turf mode. So if you're landscaping or using it around your house, you don't want to tear it all up. Just put it in single rear wheel drive, or you can go up and put posi track in or all wheel drive if you're out on the trails and you're getting into some muddy conditions. But then coming over here to the LCD display, it's over a five inch LCD display. Super easy to see when you're going down the trail. And in my opinion, Bad Boy Off-Road has created one of the most technologically advanced onboard driver information centers that there is on the market. When you put this thing in diagnostic mode, it will take it right down to whether or not you need to change your spark plug. Something else I really like about the Stampede is the extended cab design. It's a lot like your pickup truck. And this area here holds up to 170 pounds. You've got some side doors here that are quiet that keeps your gear out of the elements because you have a roof that comes over top of it. So if it does happen to rain, it doesn't get on your gear. And if you do haul wood or harvest an animal, you don't get your gear all mixed up in it. The Stampede can tow up to 2,000 pounds and you could put up to 600 pounds in the bed. This side by side is getting work done. you can pretty much customize your side-by-side -side for how you're gonna use it. For us, we did a warm ProVantage 4500 winch, we did a front hood rack, we did a roof and a light bar, and the light bar makes a huge difference when you're trail riding at night. And then we also did a gun holder and a bow holder and a couple other miscellaneous little things. But whenever it comes to accessories, Bad Boy Off-Road has got a lot of options. The Stampede is manufactured in Augusta, Georgia and comes with a standard two-year warranty. 
We've been using ours for a couple months now. We've been putting it to the test. We've been working hard with it, playing hard with it. And the nice thing about the Bad Boy Off-Road Division is they're a part of the Textron family, which is well known for off-road racing and military applications. So I can't wait to see what Bad Boy Off-Road has coming out next. This week's tip of the week is brought to you by Ward Industries. Whenever it comes to off-roading, things are going to break. That's just a part of the game. But one thing that'll send you back to the trailhead quick is a blown axle. Now, one of the things you can do to prevent this from happening and ruining your rod is do a pre-rod inspection and check out your CV boots. You want to make sure you clean them up real good, check them out, you didn't tear them, because the CV boot is really exposed on your machine when you're going down the trail. You could have a stick go in there, an old piece of fence. I've even seen grass wrapped around a CV boot so tight that it's actually torn it. And what's going to happen when your CV boot tears is all that mud and dirt and debris and everything from the trails being pushed inside and it's pushing the grease out of it. So then you'll start to hear a popping or a clicking noise when you make a sharp turn. And when you start hearing that popping or clicking noise, you know it's time for a new axle. A great aftermarket option is 4X Pro. They have a high performance heavy duty axle at a great price point and it has a one year warranty. 4X Pro stocks axles for over 2,000 applications of ATVs and side-by-sides, and they have free shipping in the U.S., so you can get back out on the trail to enjoy your ride. Well, folks, that's all the time we have this week. Thanks a lot for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure and check us out on Facebook or at fishersatvworld.com. And until next week, ride on and keep it real. Hey, why you guys got all the snacks in your Jeep? What's up with that? Huh? You're hiding all the cookies. You're too slow. That's not even right. Perfect. You're too slow. We're driving him early. <laughs> we saw Bob in Florida. We see him out here in Colorado. He's all over the place. Pennsylvania rally. Pennsylvania, yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, you've been all over the place, and we just happened to get behind you in line to nope. get breakfast yesterday. That was of all the timing, just yeah. right there. Yep. So yeah, the world is small. It's fun. Where you bump into friends and people, you never know.